O oh God, who in creating the human race will that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in the bond of inseparable love. These your servants, who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I 
encourage you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Let love be sincere. Hate what is evil. Hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Endure in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the loved ones. Exercise hospitality. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Chase 
That itself is counterculture. Or we can see something rare in that. Getting married in a church instead of in the mountain, the mountains, on the boat, on the beach. And that is also something that's becoming increasingly rare. Yes, those places are beautiful. But there's one thing missing from the mountains or the boat or the beach. And that is the cross. The cross, they chose a chapel, a Catholic chapel, with a cross front and center to illustrate the beauty of salvation and the, and the struggle of salvation, the pastoral mystery, which you don't get in any natural environment. So this is rare that they're here in this chapel. And this is where we can enter in the first reading we heard today that they chose. By the way, whenever you have a holy cup like this and you have the readings, you need to listen very, I hope you listen very carefully to the readings because they chose them. I didn't choose them. There's a whole bunch of different readings in that Catholic nuptial mass that can be chosen for it. And they chose these. In fact, not only did they choose them, but they chose them separately the same. So like they flip over the readings and they pick the same ones. Okay? So it is very important that you listen to, the, listen to these readings. And if you did, make sure you can look at them in the program again as I speak of them. In this first reading, we have Sam and Corinne explaining to us by having selected it that they understand the dignity and vocation of marriage. They understand the dignity and the vocation of marriage as God designed it. In Genesis chapter 2, we hear how God designed what they are entering. And there's two important, two important truths from this that men and women are created as equal persons. Equal persons. Um, together, their maleness and their femaleness, they convey the full image of God. And this is not represented by any other parent, one man, one woman. But they also realize from this first reading from Genesis that not only are they equal people, equal partners, equal persons, but they are created as different persons, as part of God's divine plan. They are made to be male and female, precisely so they can live for each other in the totality of their lives by being two true gifts to each other, complementary. Their differences, of course, they have a lot of similarities, but their differences are uh, rooted in the sexuality. When I say sexuality, I'm not speaking merely of biology. I'm speaking about the integral differences that exist in the psyche of man and woman. They see that, they understand the beautiful differences that exist between them as male and female. And these differences are uniting them together in this holy sacrament that was illustrated in. Genesis 2. This year in the Catholic Church, there will be um, a new ritual of marriage that has begun in the English speaking <coughs> I went to a conference on recently, and uh, the, the described marriage has been changed from it's almost 50 years old to right Vatican II. And the church, because of the counter, because of the cultural revolutions that have taken place in the definition of marriage, the church has use less of the word marriage in this new ritual and use more of the word matrimony. And see, that got me thinking. You know, I looked up matrimony, and it's from a 13th century old French matrimony, matrimony meaning, uh, and directly from the Latin matrimonium, which means wedlock or marriage, but that comes from the Latin word matra, which means mother. Which means mother. So this is Christ, and we know this from Ephesians 5, which is not that today, there's a better option. That just as Christ is related to the church, there's spousal relationship, the church is also our mother. And so they are replicating that unique bond between Christ and his bride, the church, our mother. That's where the matrimony comes from. So, so you know, to the state, they can do. They, they already hijacked the word marriage. But this, this is holy matrimony. Nothing will change it. Nothing. Because it was appointed by God from the beginning, 
and has stood the test of time over millennia, as well as different cultures and traditions around the world, as well as even the three major religions of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. It has never changed. This right here is holy matrimony, and that's what one of the other things that they're saying here. You know, <clears throat> they have not come to this point by themselves, of course. I mentioned that they're seeking God's help, but they also have incredible examples. And incredible examples of their family, their parents, who all, their parents and grandparents who are present here today, are all witnesses of faithful, fruitful matrimony. And we want to just acknowledge, we even thank you, Sam's parents, Michael and Tracy, for 27 years. Friends' parents, Mark and Claire, for 35 years of holy matrimony. Samuel's grandparents, Pat and Charlene, this August, 60 years. And his other grandparents, Carol and Lorraine, for 58 years. And Corinne's grandparents, Howard and Marilyn, also for 58 years. Well, they weren't quite sure when asking yesterday. They were like, we think it's for 58 years. <laughs> but, <laughs> 62, okay, we're going to talk. I guess it's all fun But that's a truthful, long, beautiful fidelity. Let us acknowledge that.
faithfulness or achieving marriage or in chastity or marriage. The key here is usually praying regularly helps Praying regularly, not just going to church on Sundays, but praying every day of the church. And maybe to do that based on prayer that you have as a speaking person with each other. When we think that these words are impossible, also we can recall to mind in your future marriage the words of Jesus in today's gospel that both of you take. The context here is this late version of John is this is Jesus' prayer to the Father in the midst of his apostles. So Jesus just finished giving this long discourse to uh, his apostles, and now he's praying to the Father in their presence. He's praying for his apostles. And now we might say that Jesus is praying this prayer for you too. Uh, he says, he prays to the Father, and he says, uh, he describes what love is. And this is another important thing given our culture. We've heard it said, love is love. Well, that's not a definition. That's a self-reflexive definition, which really means nothing. It's like if I said, brogies are brogies. Okay? <laughs> but, so, but love is something much more. Love is this union between the Son and the Father that he speaks about. This union, I mean, we might say that, we might say that the union between the Father and the Son is not figurative. It's literal. Alright? The, the Father and the Son are literally united. Alright? And, and so too, that kind of union, Jesus is saying, is happening here between Sam and Corinne. That love is not, is, is love is the cross. Love is sacrifice. Uh, you know, I've heard it said from experienced married couples that if you go into marriage feeling like you're giving 50-50, then you're actually giving 0%. It is only when you're giving 100% of yourself, dying to yourself, that you're actually then giving about it. You know, love is sacrifice. Love is laying down your life for your friends, and for, in your case today, for your spouse. If you look into the program that they provided with you, they put that beautiful image of the sacred heart on there, which is also represented in this all the you know, before, yes, please, or a notice, a heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Okay, this notice above that sacred heart is what? The cross. The cross is the crown of the love of Christ. Venerable Old Sheen wrote in The Three Get Married and said, The more marriage of a union is based on that divine union of Jesus and the Father, the more a husband and wife are in harmony with God, the more they find in each other that eternal fascination and satisfaction that transcend earthly frailties and disappointments. Their love can become immortal, and the lovers united to him are caught up in the ceaseless current of love that flows between the persons of the most blessed children. Or indeed would love be if there were only two flames within closed lanterns. Indeed, Sam and Corinne, your flames are now in this sacred liturgy becoming united into one flame. Don't worry, we're not going to use unity. But that image, what she is talking about, the unification of two flames into one, as Jesus is one with the Father and the Gospel, and he chose. So may the fire of your love, the fire that comes from none of us and God Himself, and may that Holy Spirit that's depicted also above of all the kingdom ceiling there, may, that, may this Holy Spirit and that love come down upon you, so that you may see your union as being in communion with God. To reignite the flames within your own hearts for God and for each other. And then you can repeat, repeat that beautiful prayer, O poor Yisru, misery of
may strengthen your love in the presence of the church's minister and his community. Christ abundantly blesses this love. He has already consecrated you in baptism, and now he enriches and strengthens you by a special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Sam and Corinne, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Will you love each other and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? Yes. Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and His church? Yes. Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and His church. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his blessings. What God has joined, men must not divide. Amen. <laughs> Lord, bless and consecrate Sam and Corinne in their love for each other. May these rings be a symbol of true faith in each other and always remind them of their love through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Church and its leaders, may our commitment to the gospel lead us to deepen our faith and trust in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world and its leaders, may all people be treated with the dignity they deserve as God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and those who defend it, may our men and women who serve in the military be kept safe from all harm. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, lonely, or depressed, may they be strengthened by God's love and aided by friends and family. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all our guests gathered here with us today, may they enjoy the warm company of family and friends and have safe travel on their journey home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Sam and Corinne Dinati, may they live long, blessed lives together. May their love grow stronger each and every day. May they build a family rooted in faith and unconditional love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For James and Corinne Middleton, and for all those who have died, may they know the peace and fullness of eternal life with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you are our love who created us and banishes all darkness. Hear our prayers today for Sam and Corinne Janati and all who join together to be sacraments of your love to this world. Sustain them always with your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you through the divine and work of human hands and will become our spiritual friend. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. In the Lord's sacrifice and your hands, for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not fortified by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Now look with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Corinne. And let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do, and with the strength that comes from the gospel, May they bear true witnesses to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Please offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. All Catholics who are in a state of grace are invited to receive communion. Anyone who is not receiving communion, um, you may remain in your seat if you wish, or you're invited to come forward for a blessing. And the sign of wishing to receive a blessing would be to have your arms crossed over your chest like this.
by the power of the sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union, and replenished with the one bread and the one chalice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time is a sign of their devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, Sam and Corinne are going to present to her uh, flowers representative of consecrating their marriage to her. And so uh, I invite you to either kneel with them in this presentation and him, or please remain standing. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. for the blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart and love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.